Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Uh, over the last year or so, I've had 10 gig ethernet switches in my search history, and I've just been looking and trying to keep an eye on to see if anything becomes cheaper. And I know there's heaps of like micro tick solutions and stuff like that. I wasn't even gonna make a video about this at all, but in March, I think it was, I saw this switch pop up. Now, I, um, I'm i a networking guy. I, I just love having fast networking stuff, and especially because we like to edit over the network. We were using like 10 gig point to point stuff between devices, but I wanted to change our entire house to 10 gig. And as you know, 10 gig solutions come with a few issues in a house. First is noise, heat, whether or not the cabling in your walls, if your house does have ethernet in the walls, is compatible. Surprise, surprise, we've got Cat6A in the walls at our house, so 10 gig is not gonna be a problem, and it's not a problem at all. And basically, just to give you a bit of a rundown, I, I always see videos about people talking about cheap and affordable 10 gig ethernet solutions for your home network. A lot of them are quite expensive, they're noisy, they're hot, kinda hard to configure if you're not versed in networking, but this is a solution that I found to be more of something that is, you know, accessible, because come with me, check this out, right? This one supports things like 10K jumbo frames. It's got like 100 gig throughput on a five port switch. Now this isn't sponsored by TP-Link. I just wanted to share this with you because I wasn't even gonna make a video about it, but I'll just quickly show you the setup that we're using this in. So this is like my networking cupboard in my office. So as you can see here, that's the Acer Store NAS that we did a video about. We use Ubiquiti gear mainly for our stuff for routing. Uh, we've got Ubiquiti access points. We've got an ingenious one, which is uh, Wi-Fi 6. We've also got our like other networking gear, but look, right here, see it, Claire? Can you see my hand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the 10 gig switch right there. And uh, oh, that's our little ESX server. But you can see the little patch panel on the wall. So I've only got a bunch of them actually connected up to 10 gig for the stuff that we need to use. So I, I, I'm only making this video because I thought that this might actually be a cheap-ish solution to other solutions. Come back, let's go back to the studio. Other solutions that might not be uh, ideal and kind of expensive because when you look at the stuff like the Mikrotik stuff, some of them need SFP, some of them are fiber. A lot of the solutions I think are a little bit complicated. This one really came from about a year of looking for a fairly decent solution. It sounds like an ad, hey. It's just not. Like this is something that I actually found that was gonna do the job. Now, I had so much confidence in this product, Show, tell them the secret, hey Claire. And I'll move this soft box around so they can see me. Or is that terrible? <laughs> I had so much confidence in these switches that I ended up buying three. So yeah, I mean, I've got two that we've like deployed already and a third one for another thing that we're setting up at the moment, but I actually bought three. Now, the, the question is like, Obviously, I'm gonna talk about all the specs and everything in this video as well for those who are into the networking side of everything. But I just wanted to say like, this isn't sponsored or anything like this. We spent our own money on these. And these are about 500 Aussie dollars each. And for us, the investment is like, it's worth it because of all the high-speed networking stuff that you do and blah, blah, blah. Moving raw video files across the network. We shoot in 6K raw most of the time. So you guys can understand what that would be like moving footage around the network and whatnot and accessing stuff. And now we've got another editor with Parsec set up. We've actually got another Parsec video coming soon. We did have 10 gig networking gear before. It was Juniper gear. Very loud, very annoying, not very good for a house, and I just found this to be a much better solution. So I think these are going for around 275 US dollars, so that's probably gonna be somewhere on the thumbnail, the video title or whatnot. I never remember the name of these. What is it, the TLSX105, whatever. Yep, that's our new 10 gig switch. I think it's pretty interesting, so yeah, let's take a closer look. All right, let's crack open this freshie, this one that we haven't opened yet. Whoa, this, thing, this thing's like floating. <laughs> Right, so you might be asking yourself, why would I need something like this for my own home network? Well, there's a few reasons. Most motherboards that have come out in the last few years all have 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And because this is a multi-gig switch, this supports that speed right out of the box as well. So I, I think that if people wanna have faster networking in general, 
uh, this might be something to look at. So, I mean, there isn't a lot going on. Power, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Power, insulation guide. I mean, it's very thin for a reason because there is no configuration required. Here it is, the TP-Link TLSX105, a multi-gig switch that supports 10 gig networking. This switch supports up to 10 gigs on all five ports. There's no SFP, there's nothing like that. There's no uplinks, nothing to make it super complicated for those who just want a plug and play solution. And that's really what this is. This has indications telling you what is actually happening here. So each light, basically tells you the link speed. So 2.5 gig is on the right light and 10 and five is on the left light. Five gig's a weird one. I've only seen one motherboard with a five gig adapter and five gig adapters in general are not very common. But if the left one is orange, it's running at five gig. If it's green, it's running at 10. The same applies here. 2.5 gig is green on the right hand side and it's either one gig or 100 meg if it's orange. It's not a very complicated switch at all. It does have a Kensington lock on the back if you're wanting to mount it that way and a regular 12 volt, two amp power connection, as well as regular mounting for mounting it to like screws in things to hang it. But it doesn't have any rack mount ear adapters. There is an eight port one of this coming soon that I'll probably end up grabbing as well, which is going, I think it's 660 odd Aussie dollars. I'm not sure about the US price. I'm gonna say around 400 US dollars. And that one has rack ears that come with it and the mounting holes for rack ears. But yeah, because this one's a little bit smaller, it does not. But I'm sure if you're enterprising enough, you can 3D print your own ears if that's something you wanted to do. So you don't have to, I'm gonna do the cardinal sin of anything brand new and I'm gonna crack it open. Let's see what's inside this thing. It's probably nothing super interesting considering this is a dumb switch, uh, not a smart switch. So there's no type of management interface or anything for this, but you know, I, I'm just curious. I wanna see what's going on in the guts. It's probably just, a giant heat sink because these do, I have to admit, get quite hot. Let's see, okay, that is very easy to pull apart. Let's have a look, right? Yep, yeah, it's just two giant heat sinks. Now I'm not gonna completely disassemble this mainly because I can't be bothered reapplying thermal paste to this thing because it looks like there would be a considerable amount, but it looks as though this PCB has been designed with an SFP connection and it's just not there. So maybe there's another version of this coming with SFP, but that would probably require some active cooling. These heat sinks are quite chunky. I'm guessing there's some thermal interface material underneath. Just looking through here, I can see that between the chassis and the bottom side of the PCB, that there is thermal pads between the actual PCB and the casing. So. I don't really want to pull that apart right now. I guess uh, there'll be some other networking channels that will do a full teardown of this, but I was just curious to see if there was any provisions on the PCB for anything else, which there does appear to be an SFP port that has not been populated here. Hmm, this has got me thinking about what ideas they had for this product initially. All right, I wanna show you guys just some quick real world testing so you can see uh, the kind of speeds that we're personally getting. Now, this is always gonna be dependent on stuff like the speed of your storage and any other device that's on your network, how many hops it needs to make to get to that part of your network and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think our transfer speeds are quite good. Let's cut this folder here. The, all of the storage that this machine's connected to is 10 gigs, so it doesn't matter where I copy this, including this NFS share down here, but let's just put it in raw footage. That one was a PC build. Let's just do that. And well, let's, let's take a look at the network throughput. So this is just about maxing out the throughput of 10 gig as it is. Obviously we're getting some loss here with some caching on the network drives as well as well as file sizes. They come into play, especially when transferring a lot of data. So the smaller file sizes will reduce the, the transfer speed, but most of these files are quite large. So yeah, nothing too out of the ordinary here. So we'll just let this copy for the next couple of minutes because I was gonna move these files 
to this location on the network anyway, so whatever. All right, real time, Crystal Dismark, Runners Administrator. Here we go, right? Uh, we will select the H drive, which is a lot of gigabytes. We'll just change this to one run. We'll hit go and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Looks like I selected the wrong drive. The other one doesn't have SSD caching, but this is the one that we actually use for editing. Yeah, okay, so now we're getting uh, about 10 gig speeds over the network now. <laughs> yeah, literally I um, stupidly selected the wrong drive. It's the problem when you have so many network stores connected to a single computer. But yeah, it's about, it's, it's about twice as fast as the last result that we just saw. And this is really good speeds if you're editing over a network. So I don't think that uh, it's going to hinder you. And yeah, this is as close to 10 gig as you're going to get with SSD cache storage on a network like this. So one gig a second, one gigabyte per second, not gigabit, gigabyte per second. Although with less network hops, you'd probably get slightly faster. When we tested this Acer store now, so we're getting closer to 1200, but you know, I'm happy with about a gig a second. That's not too bad at all. What you're seeing here is a pretty admirable result for network storage. As mentioned, this video is not a review. TP-Link didn't send us this stuff. We bought this stuff with our own money. We wanted to see how it would go. And I, like I said, I was confident enough for it to work that I went and bought three for our own home network. And this is also the network that we use to edit videos and all that kind of stuff. And I think uh, for 275 US dollars, I think that's what the price is. This is not a bad solution, but if you can hold out and wait for the eight port version, which is gonna be a little bit more, that might be more up your alley because uh, if you're uplinking this into a network, you're automatically losing one port. Regardless, uh, with any type of network design you're gonna be using this switch for, you're gonna be losing a single port anyway. So maybe an eight port switch will be up your alley. I feel like I'll be buying the eight port and replacing the five port that I've got in there to light up all of our patch panel as 10 gig because we've got seven ports on our network and then one for uplink and blah. You guys know how it works, right? So I think that's probably what we'll, we'll do or I'll add the eight port one and leave the other five gig in there or whatever. I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but I think this is a pretty interesting solution for heat. Uh, if you've got a newer motherboard with 2.5 gigabit ethernet, it's quiet, it's fanless, and you can check out that part of the video to see that it's fanless that I cracked it open. But traditionally for this 10 gig stuff, you can buy cheaper secondhand stuff off eBay and whatever marketplace your country uses. But I feel like for a new solution that supports multi gig, now some of the 10 gig networking stuff doesn't support 2.5 or five. So this is a great little in between if you're looking at upgrading to 10 gig. This from me using it, I think, two weeks now, something like that. Yeah, it's been pretty good, pretty stable. I've been editing over the network nonstop with it. So I have found this to be pretty good. Whether or not I could recommend this, I would say yes, if you need a five port solution. Otherwise, I would probably wait, spend the extra little bit of money and get that eight port one. But I was in a bit of a pickle and pretty impatient. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pull the trigger on three of these five port tlsx 105s so anyways guys that's just about gonna do it if you like this video hit the like button if you hated the video hit the dislike button twice once again thank you so very much for watching i'm your boy nick with gear seekers you peak we see i'll put a product page link for all the specifics for tp link's website i did mention a couple of things it is multi-gig does 10k jumbo frames and that kind of stuff if that's your cup of tea if you're not into networking just skip this video or whatever but i do want to talk about one last thing before i wrap up the video we're working on something really interesting to do with Linux, like really, really interesting. So if you love Linux, I'll uh, hide a link to something in the description. Thanks for watching.